What's going on guys? Today we're going to examine what the future likely holds for Darby after he finally revealed his identity in My Hero Academia chapter 290. We'll be talking about how his relevance might change after this arc and predict what his next moves will likely be going forward. As you can expect, there will be spoilers ahead so uh, proceed with caution and as usual don't forget to hit that sub button if you haven't already. Okay, so for the longest time, the most intriguing thing about Darby has been the secret surrounding his identity. Uh, so much so that in the official Ultra Analysis book, the highest rated stat for this character was Mystery. Now that we know for a fact he is Toya Todoroki, aka the son of the number one hero, what exactly will be his defining role from now on? Personally, I think Darby's actions over the coming years will now serve to directly build him up to be Shoto's final enemy for the end of My Hero Academia. We've already seen that he feels no brotherly love towards the youngest Todoroki, and in fact, Dabi once thought about killing Shoto according to the spoilers for the latest chapter. Therefore, I think it's likely that Harukoshi will create this direct rivalry between Toya and Shoto, similar to the one that exists between Deku and Shigaraki. There are two main ways I see this happening, with the first and most obvious being that Toya kills Endeavor during the war arc. Since the beginning of the war, Endeavor has fought the regular Nomu, he's fought the higher Nomu, obviously he fought against Shigaraki, and then he fought against All For One who was kind of like possessing Shigaraki's body. So he's been through a lot, he's pretty exhausted, and he's basically at his limit. At this moment, Endeavor just doesn't have it in him to put up a genuine fight. Whereas Dabi on the other hand, he's looking fresher than ever before. This situation was foreshadowed back in the Pro Hero arc, in which Endeavor was exhausted from his fight with the higher Nomu, and then Dabi rushed in to attack him, seemingly not caring that the fight was totally unfair. On that occasion, Mirko kind of intervened to stop Dabi, but I mean, this time around, he has a second chance to attack his father while he's down. If Toya kills the number one hero in the upcoming chapters, it would not only scar Shoto for life, but it would also give him motivation to get revenge on his older brother. I think it's important to remember that Shoto has not yet told his dad that he forgives him. So in my opinion, you know, this is something I would like to see, it would be kind of poetic if Shoto was to say he forgives his dad as like kind of like final words to Endeavor right before the hero gets just fried by his oldest son. It would show that Enji did do enough to redeem himself in the eyes of one child, but that the past still came back to bite him. It would be pretty poetic and sad, but you know, it'd also be like an epic moment for this series. So this is the this is the ideal scenario for me. The chaos that Toya has now created will surely make Stain's will a reality, and the so-called fake heroes will no longer be revered by society. Because Toya is the one who exposed the heroes, it's possible that he can gain a following similar to how Stain did. The fact remains that Stain was a murderer, but you know, even students like Deku and Seji, they understood or respected his ideology. Um, so I do think Dabi could gain a following for being the one to expose the heroes, and essentially all the followers of Stain will now follow Dabi. I should also mention that Dabi's broadcast to Japan makes him seem like the victim, so I think a lot of people will be very sympathetic towards him and be willing to follow him. As one of the leaders of the Paranormal Liberation Front, Dabi can use his position of authority and also his potential army of supporters to acquire power, wealth, and also quirks. If you've not seen my Dabi regeneration theory, then I'd recommend checking it out. But the basic idea is that Shigaraki can use All for One to give Dabi new quirks, such as regeneration. And of course, Dr. Garaki can enhance Toya's body to handle multiple quirks but I, I guess first they have to get him back from the heroes, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. With Toya having two quirks and Shoto having a hybrid quirk, the parallel between them would become even more obvious, and so I think it's something that Horikoshi might consider. Moving on though, whether Endeavor is killed or not, the fact is that Toya has now totally destroyed his career. Public popularity is a big factor when it comes to where heroes place on the rankings, and thanks to Toya's broadcast, everyone knows the truth about Endeavor's terrible past. Even Endeavor's fans were watching the broadcast. This move will definitely crumble any faith that there would have been for heroes in Japan. I mean, if you're a Japanese citizen, how can you feel safe 
when not only is the son of the number one hero a villain, but Gigantomachia and Shigaraki were allowed to run Rampage and take thousands of lives. To be honest, there will be no trust left, which brings us to the second way that Horikoshi can create a direct rivalry between uh, the Todoroki brothers. Dabi knows that Yue is one of the biggest foundations of hero society, and so naturally he'll do anything he can to destroy people's trust in Yue. In the aftermath of this entire arc, I think that Yue might be shut down and students will be forced to flee abroad. The reason I think this is possible is because Yue has put students on the front line of a war, and Dabi mentioned himself how he thought this was a bit tacky. How is Bakugo's mom gonna react when she sees his bin literally skewered on live TV? And how is Inkomodoria gonna react when she sees that Deku is, I mean, Deku's just being Deku, but you know, it's gonna be bad for the parents as well. They won't want their children attending Yue. If the school does shut down, then it will only cause Shoto's resentment to grow because as we all know, his dream is to become a hero. And by the school shutting down, it's kind of like a massive obstacle. By fleeing abroad, the youngest Todoroki would have no choice but to get much stronger before he can return and face the enhanced Toya Todoroki. This could parallel how Deku needs to unlock all the different quirks before he can return to face the enhanced Shigaraki. Ultimately, those were just some of the ideas I had in the aftermath of the Toya Todoroki reveal, um, but I think they're all plausible based on what we've seen so far. Let me know what you think might happen next in the comments below, and remember that I'm streaming tomorrow and on Sunday uh, at midday eastern time. Until the next one, peace out.